Hi, I'm Tracy, VE3TWM. Thank you for tuning in to Outdoors on the Air. Well, I'm out here at Field Day in 2024, and let me tell you a little story. Uh, a few years ago, uh, I, I, had, I, I had a complete brain fart, and I sold my FT817, my beloved Yesu FT817. I, I came to regret my decision and was actually able to purchase it back from the ham that I sold it to. But he, he had gotten tired of the whole QRP and small rig thing. During the span that he owned the, the 817, he had acquired some accessories for it. One of those accessories was the MXP50M amplifier. This is a Chinese amplifier. Uh, there is no brand name as near as I can tell uh, and, uh, and and up to this point in time uh, of me purchasing back the 817 I, I had I had dissed the entire concept of using amplifiers with QRP radios as that seemed to just kill the whole mission statement of the QRP mindset anyway he sold me these accessories along with the radio. Uh, it, it didn't cost me much more than, than a nominal fee to take all of this additional stuff he collected. And this amplifier has sat in my basement for a number of years now, collecting dust, because I just haven't felt the urge to try it out. Well, it's time. Uh, I intend to try it during field day, here and uh, I'll be using it with the ICOM 705. But let me show you the amplifier and tell you a few things about it to help you understand what we're looking at and, and things that if you are considering this amplifier and potentially other amplifiers for your QRP radio that you should be looking out for. The MXP50M is a fairly compact package uh, it really, it goes along easily with a QRP rig and a, and a carry bag, a go kit, whatever you might have. This particular one, uh, you'll notice, has a band switch prominent on the front. Now, you must manually switch your band before transmitting or you risk damaging the amplifier. And I've, I've actually made the mistake a couple of times. Uh, where I've, I've transmitted on the wrong band without flipping the switch and uh, I immediately noticed and put my hand on the top and this thing was baking hot. So that's number one. You have to be constantly aware that that band adjust switch has to be on the band you're operating on or, or this, the investment in this is just going to go away. The other thing to be wary of with this amplifier is that you have to keep the SWR low. It has to be, it absolutely must be below two to one. And if you are really taking care of the unit, it should never go above 1.5 to one. So that means if you've got an antenna tuner uh, in line, because you need to use it with your antenna to gain uh, a, a below 1.5 to one bandwidth across whatever band you're using, you need to insert the tuner after the amplifier, i.e. between the amplifier and the antenna, so that the amplifier is seeing the lower SWR. So here is the amplifier in question, and just to give you a bit of an idea of scale, there's my hand. Not a particularly large unit, kind of slim line. Uh, now, Whenever you get into the amplifier situation, you'd better be prepared for a mess of wires. Because <laughs> you, need, you need to run uh, the antenna output from the radio into the amplifier. And you also need to have a, uh, a wire going back to the radio for the what they call the line jack, the send jack. Uh, that which controls the on-off of the amplifier. <laughs> now, a number of years ago, uh, somebody that I've got a lot of respect for on YouTube, Kevin Lachlan, 
released a series of videos uh, talking about this amplifier and using it with the ICOM 705. And, and I'll put uh, a link to one of those videos down below. Unfortunately, now th this is a low-end product. I believe they're still available. They probably run for somewhere between two and three hundred dollars U.S. Uh, and and there are there are more recent uh, amplifiers on the market that that offer arguably better, more reliable performance at a price point which is not much higher than this. So, so bear that in mind as we talk about this product. One of the things that Kevin Lachlan referred to in his videos was the fact that this radio, or sorry, this amplifier can present an unwanted voltage back into the radio. It's got a lack of protection. And as a result of that, it's a really good idea to either modify internally the amplifier or to add in a buffer. And that's what this is. This is sold, uh, this particular one here is sold by uh, an eBay reseller. His, uh, his store name is Radio Dan. And, and this cost me somewhere around, by the time shipping came in, and shipping to Canada sometimes can be insane, it was somewhere around $200. Now, I, I think the actual retail price on that buffer is less than a hundred dollars US but by the time you factor in conversion and, uh, and again the shipping uh, it, it became uh, a lot more than that however uh, I felt strongly enough about protecting my investment in the ICOM 705 that I felt that was a useful thing to do so it is protecting my radio and, and by the way uh, when you when you buy it from Radio Dan uh, it, it comes with the cabling necessary to uh, to, to connect into the 705 and 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 he does sell it with kits uh, cable kits to connect into other radios as well the next thing I'll talk to you about is current draw so if you presume that this is a 45 watt output trend uh, amplifier you're going to get the idea that it's going to draw a fair amount of current on transmit it does remain in line, of course, when you're receiving, and current draw is actually very minimal. You're just going to want to make sure that you have enough battery, if you're operating in the field with this, to be able to power it as if you were powering, let's say, a 100-watt radio. That'll give you, obviously, more than enough. But this is probably going to draw somewhere in the area of 10 to 12 amps while, while you're transmitting. Okay, there's the, the background on it. Let's make a few contacts with the amp in line and see how it does. Echo 3, Tango Whiskey Mike. Vector Echo 3, Tango Whiskey Mike. Here's Kilo 2, Charlie Juliet Bravo calling. Kilo 2, Charlie Juliet Bravo. Kilo 2, Charlie Juliet Bravo. Please copy Victor Echo 3, Tango Whiskey Mike. So let me let me try this, Chris, if you don't mind. I think I'd like to uh, have this for reference. Here's this this transmission right here with the amplifier on. So putting out approximately 40 watts. I'm going to come back to you with immediately with another transmission, and that'll be at 5 watts, and we'll just compare the two of them, okay? Okay, go ahead. Kilo 2, Charlie Juliet Bravo, Victor Echo 3, Tango Whiskey Mike with 5 watts. Okay, well, I'm not going to play around with 5 watts anymore, Chris. Thanks for that, and I've got the amplifier turned back on. Yeah, it's definitely, uh, I definitely copy you now. You're definitely above the noise floor. Okay, yeah, it's definitely, I can definitely copy you, uh, but, you know, you're above the noise. Um, but the, 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 the band's kind of noisy tonight. I mean, I got, I got like an S6 and S7 noise level, so uh, I can see uh, you, uh, your signal going just over S7 every once in a while. That's where it's peaking. Seven three 
Mercedes K2XR Kilo 3 Juliet Alpha Sierra Laurel Summit uh, State Park. Where is it? Park to park. Uh, park to park, please. Park to park. This is Victor Echo 3 Tango Whiskey Mike. Victor Echo 3 Tango Whiskey Mike. Uh, wonderful. Park to park. <laughs> it's been a while since I've been on POTA, so you have to... Uh, I have to cut me a little bit of a break here. I have to get back in and get my head into the game. Jack, you're no problem with me. I got I got patience. Not a, not a problem at all. Uh, you got a beautiful signal into southern Ontario today. I'm literally sitting on the shore, the north shore of Lake Erie, and uh, you're just you're just booming in. Uh, my park number, if you want to, if you got a chance to record it, Charlie Alpha zero three eight one. Okay, CA thirty eight uh, zero three eight one. Yeah, we're logging with a computer here, so I got to do a little bit of typing. And uh, thank you very much. Yeah, not a problem. Hey, Jack, I wondered. Now you haven't given me my uh, report yet. I wonder if you'd do that, and if you'd let me. I've got an amplifier plugged in. I just want to turn it. Or give you have you give me a report uh, with right now with the amp on, and then again with the amp off. Would you mind? Absolutely. Okay, it's a uh, very solid uh, five, six to seven. Six to seven, uh, very clean. I was watching the yes meter. Go ahead. Okay, thanks for the five, six. After this next transmission, I'm going to come right back to you uh, with the amplifier off. Kilo 3, Julia, Alpha, Sierra, Victor, Echo 3, Tango, Whiskey, Mike with no amplifier. Okay, there was a definite reduction in audio. The, uh, the audio... And you lost two S units. It's a dead solid S5. Well, fantastic. Okay, I'm going to flip the amp back on, Jack. A Kilo 3, Juliet Alpha Sierra from Victor Echo 3 Tango Whiskey Mike. Appreciate the report there, Jack. Really appreciate it. And, uh, yeah, have uh, good luck with those rattlesnakes. I am so grateful. You know, everybody loves to complain about Canadian winters, but uh, that means we don't have to deal with stuff like that. QSL? I appreciate that very much, <laughs> and uh, no, it's not often you see the snakes up here, but with this unusually hot weather we've had for a while, they're, they're kind of running around saying, boy, this is nice. Oh, fantastic. Well, yeah, like I say fantastic, what I really mean is that's incredible. Uh, I sure am, you know, I, I hear I am worrying about mosquitoes. <laughs> that puts it all in perspective for me. Jack, listen, I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Thanks so much for the activation, and uh, it's 7-3. Okay, 7-3, and uh, thank you very much for that, and I'm glad I could give you a report. It's kind of amazing. Yeah, you turn the amplifier on, your audio gets nice and strong. Yeah, and, and so just to fill in the blank for you, I was running with the amplifier and putting out about 45 watts. Without, I'm putting in 5 watts. Oh, Lord have mercy, that's fantastic. For 5 watts, you're doing a great job. So, on balance, based upon my on-the-air experiences, would I recommend the MX P50M? Yes, with an asterisk. Get a buffer or do the internal modification to make sure this thing is not going to damage your radio. Two, get a good price on it. Make sure you shop around. Take a look at some of the cool new amplifiers that are coming out from non-Chinese sources uh, and, uh, and, and make a good decision in terms of competitive landscape. Are, are you, is the MXP50M actually a good value for what it offers? One of the great features that are appearing in some of these small amplifiers is automatic band switching. I can just see myself out in the field one day forgetting to flip that switch over when I change a band and the next thing I know I've got a fried amplifier. So that, that, that would be worth paying more in my estimation. It's small, it's compact, it's fairly rugged by the way. It's, uh, it's, it's a metal case. Uh, I, I think as long as you're uh, reasonably careful with it you're not going to have an issue. But it, it's a good tool and uh, it worked well for me uh, in this field day. So there you have it. My thoughts on the MX P50M. Man, I wish they would get themselves a brand name. What do you think? Have you used one of these? Do you have a recommendation for a QRP Radio's external power amplifier? Uh, something that, that you liked either from a price point perspective, quality perspective, durability perspective, power consumption perspective, 
all the above. Would really love to hear what you think. Please put a comment below. Let myself and any others who may happen to read it know what you found. Well, that's all for this time. Thanks for watching. Now it's your turn. Get out of the shack, get outdoors, and get on the air. 7-3 from Tracy, VE3TWM.